Hello and welcome to another lesson here with me, Anna English, on this channel, English Like a Native. Today we are doing letter M of British slang words A to Z. So we're getting there, guys. We're a good way through the alphabet now. I hope you've enjoyed the previous slang word video lessons and Today, M covers a lot of commonly used slang terms. So, without further ado, we are going to jump straight in and get started. I will say that because I've had a crazily busy day, I haven't had a chance to complete the notes, so we're going to do it live as we go through. So, um, the very first on the list is the word, or the phrase rather, to make out, to make out. If you make out, it means you kiss, and this is te this tends to be used by teenagers. So I used to say this as a teenager, but I don't really say it very often now. Um, so you could say, they were making out behind the library. They were making out behind the library. They were kissing behind the library. Hello, if you're just joining me, it's lovely to see you here. I have just recently finished a live lesson on my singing channel, so my voice is a little tired because I've been singing for 40 minutes, full out. Um, if you joined me on that channel, hello again, and um, let's carry on, shall we? Making out. So the next one is the phrase to make tracks. Now, if I say to you, I need to make tracks, it means I need to get going, I need to leave. So let's say, um, to get going or to leave. So um, you'll say, I am sorry, it's getting late and, ooh, it's getting late and I need to make tracks. So I would love to stay, but I'm sorry, it's getting late and I need to make tracks. I need to get going. Wonderful. So the next one here is the phrase make waves. If you make waves, it's normally people become aware of you. You make waves, you kind of cause cause chaos, not chaos, but you 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 make a noise. You make waves. So whereas before maybe nobody knew who you were, maybe we're talking about at work, so in your company maybe not many people knew about you. And then you start doing things that get you noticed. So maybe you're turning up late, maybe you're um, causing a scene at work or you've come in without wearing the correct uniform or something that makes everybody talk about you. That means you are making waves at work. You're making waves at work. Um, so the example sentence I'm gonna give here is um, the young, oh, let me actually select it, that would help. The young designer designer was making waves in the fashion industry. The young designer was making waves in the fashion industry. Fabulous. Okay, so the next one is a mashup. Now, if you work with music, then you would definitely have heard this phrase to mash up. It's a mashup, and a mashup is a mix of music, and it's kind of a um, mix of music blended together, blended together. So if you might take two songs and put them together to make one song, and one song moves into the other, it's a mashup. So you've mashed them together, as it were. Um, for those of you asking about my singing channel, my singing channel is called Verba Vocal and it should be linked in the description box below. So if you're interested in singing, then please do come and find Verba Vocal. Um, okay, so you could say I really like listening, listening to this new mashup. I really like listening to this new mashup. So the next one you probably have heard, and that's max, and max is short for the maximum pos possible. So I could say to you, um, what's the max weight of uh, your luggage allowance? What's the, what's the, no, what's the, hmm, what's the max speed of this car? What's the max speed of this car? How fast is the fastest it can go? What's the max speed? And we also might hear the phrase max out, which is quite a little bit different. To max something out is to actually reach that limit. So to exhaust something. 
So for example, I could say to you, um, I've maxed out my credit card, which means I've used all the credit on my credit card. I have maxed out my credit card, which would not be a good thing, would it? I've maxed out my credit card. I've used all my credit. What is the max speed of your car? Question mark. Mm -hmm. There we go. Fabulous. And I'll just say a quick hello to my patrons. I've had Schwavek jump in here. Hi, how are you? Um, patrons, feel free to ask me any questions there in the Skype room and I will answer them as I go through. So we've covered to max something out. Max, mash up, make waves, make tracks, toodaloo, and to make out. What else is on the list? The next one is quite a funny one and it's the phrase marbles. Now, normally you'll hear um, to lose your marbles or she has lost her marbles. A marble is a little glass ball with a pattern inside it and children in the UK you have marbles as a toy. See, I, I don't really know what they do with their marbles, but it's a toy. And sometimes people will say you've lost your marbles, meaning you've lost your mind, you've gone crazy. Um, so here you can see marbles means your wits, your intelligence or your good sense. Um, and if you've lost your marbles, you've gone crazy. And this is generally how we see this word used to have lost your marbles, to have gone crazy. Okay. Um, Swavek says, I, I max out myself every day. So you'd say, I am maxed out every day. I am maxed out every day. Uh, hi, Eureka, how are you? Okay, so the next one is measly. Here is one to definitely remember. So measly means very small. So if I say I gave him a measly amount, it means I gave him a very small amount. Um, so here, a very small amount. Um, perhaps you come to my house for dinner and you say, um, I had a measly, a measly meal at Anna's house. I had a measly meal at Anna's house. It means you had a very small meal. It wasn't enough. I didn't feed you properly. And what you want is a mega meal, which means big. <laughs> I really need a mega meal right now. I really need a mega meal right now. Okay, so measly, very small, mega, very big. I'm sure you've probably heard mega before anyway. Um, it's used quite regularly. So measly and mega. What else do we have here? We have meltdown. So if something melts down, it collapses. Um, it just collapses perhaps in a, in a, to me, when I think of meltdown, I think of melt. So it starts slowly at first, but then all completely falls to destruction. And normally when we say meltdown, we could talk about um, a company melting down. So the collapse of a company, but I would most often hear it when people are talking about a person having an emotional or a mental meltdown. Um, so if someone has an emotional meltdown, it means that they, one minute they're holding it together and the next minute suddenly they just start crying or they get um, hysterical for no reason and just be very, very emotional. And you're like, whoa, she's having an emotional meltdown or he's having a meltdown. So they're just collapsing. Ah! Have you ever had a meltdown? I think we all have at some point. I definitely have. Um, drinking too much makes you lose your marbles. <laughs> yes, you can lose your marbles if you drink too much, perhaps. Um, okay, there is a windy day out there, Anna. Can you see the wind behind me? Mm, not really. It is quite windy. Uh, yes, you can see the wind blowing, can't you? In the trees. Yes, I think the weather all over the world is a little bit crazy at the moment. So, um, the next one on the list is the word merry. And this is one to remember. Now, merry can mean a couple of different things. Um, you can say that someone is merry, meaning that they're happy. Or like, for example, when we're talking about Christmas, those of you who celebrate Christmas, we say Merry Christmas and we mean happy Christmas, have a nice Christmas. Um, but if you say that a person is merry, more often than not, it means that they're slightly drunk. 
So I could say I went out last night. I was a little bit merry. I was a little bit drunk. And another way of saying this is tipsy. So if someone is tipsy, it's the same as saying they're merry. Um, so let's just add some example sentences here. Um, David had a complete meltdown last night when he found out he was going to lose his job. And um, after drinking one glass of wine, oh, we don't need a comma. I felt, I felt merry. Lovely, after drinking one glass of wine, I felt merry. All right, the next one you can see is the phrase to mess up, to mess up. If you mess up, you make a mistake. So you might say, oops, I am so sorry. I messed, I messed everything up. I messed everything up. It could mean physically you've made a mess. So if something was tidy, you've gone and thrown things around and you've made a mess, or it could mean that you've messed something up. Like if we're building a website together and I put in the wrong code and it makes the website go crazy and everything stops working, I could say, "Uh oh, I've messed the website up. I've messed it up. Um, or you could mess up a, a, a form. So if you're filling out a form and you put your name where you should have put your address, you go, oh no, I've messed up or I've messed it up, I've made a mess of it. <laughs> okay, so to mess up, we use it quite a lot. Now the next one is a fun one, and that's the word miffed. If you're miffed, um, if you're miffed, it means that you are um, f like fed up, upset. Um, if you, okay, so if someone said something horrible about me, that was unjustified, um, unnecessary, which does happen. Um, if someone says something horrible about me, I would be miffed. So Anna was miffed when the other lady um, insulted her. Insulted her. Anna was miffed when the other lady insulted her. Anna was miffed when the other lady with the, when, sorry. Anna was miffed when the other lady insulted her. Fabulous. Okay, lots of you saying, oh, you're in a different room. It's a new room. Uh, because I've just done a singing video, a live lesson with the piano here, I decided to stay in this room. It's getting very dark though, isn't it? Let me see if I can turn the lights up. Bear with me. No, that's as bright as that goes. Okay, this is as bright as it goes. It's so dark outside. The weather is just not very happy. Black clouds in the sky. Um, okay, so we've got miffed. Try to remember that one. That's a fun one. And then, oh, this is a good one. When you're late at night, um, you've already had your dinner and you suddenly feel hungry, you could say, I've got the munchies. I've got the munchies. It means you're hungry. So I've got the munchies. Um, I had an attack of the munchies. No, let's not use attack. Um, that's a little bit uh, artistic. I had, I had the munchies very late last night. So I had to raid the fridge. I had the munchies very late last night, so I had to raid the fridge. Fabulous, nice and easy. All right, the next one we have here is minga. A minga, a minga. Um, this means an unattractive person. It's not a very nice thing to say to someone. You call someone a minga, it's not nice. Um, it means they're unattractive. So you're like, um, did you see, um, I'm gonna change it. You should tell the teacher that your classmate called you a minger. 
You should tell the teacher that your classmate called you a minger because it's not very nice. And then you can also say that something is minging, minging. Again, this is very much slang. I would never see this written down. I was actually unsure of the spelling because I'd never seen it written before. Um, and minging just means disgusting. If something is minging, it's disgusting. So I could say the meal, last night's dinner, last night's dinner was minging. Last night's dinner was minging, yuck, horrid. <laughs> okay, this one's quite funny. Um, some men refer to their genitals, their, you know, their penis and testicles as meat and two veg. My meat and two veg, <laughs> which is quite fun. Um, the next one, moving swiftly along, is mo. So we often do this. Oh, and just before I move on, thank you so much. Leandro has dropped a super chat and you've said max out means run out. Yeah, if you max out can be the same as run out, it means that you've reached the limit. So it's absolutely the limit. So you could say, um, I'm, if you're, if you're driving a bus and lots of people get on the bus, the bus is full. You could say the bus is, the bus, the bus is maxed out. There's no more room. Or, um, you could say that, um, your, your luggage is maxed out if it's full. Uh, yeah, so to be maxed out is to reach your limit, but we often say maxed out with a credit card. My credit card is maxed out. My overdraft is maxed out. Okay, let's carry on. So um, mo, short for moment, and we use this all the time. So we might say, um, I'm just popping to the shop. We've covered this a few times. I'm just popping to the shop. I'll be back in a mo. I'll be back in a mo meaning I'll be back in a moment. Just pop into the shop, I'll be back in a mo. Great. Okay, so Mojo. If any of you have watched um, Austin Powers, then you would have heard perhaps the word Mojo. And your Mojo is your zest, your spirit, your energy and eagerness to do things. Um, so, for example, I have I have a Mojo for... YouTube. I am very passionate about YouTube. I have this drive and energy to do YouTube videos. But sometimes um, I get tired and I get quite depressed about it. Um, sometimes when you get lots of horrible comments or if you spend a long time making a video and it doesn't do very well or people say bad things about it, it can make you lose your passion. So you would lose your mojo. And then hopefully after a few days, you'll get your mojo back. And so mojo just means like your passion, your eagerness. Um, I So I'm going to give the example sentence. I lost my mojo back in 1984. I lost my mojo back in 1984. It's very sad. All right, the next one, moolah. I wasn't sure how to spell this either because I never see it written down, ever. Um, moolah means money. So I might say to you, show me the moolah. Or rather, I could say, thank you to Leandro for, um, for your moolah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds a bit strange. But um, if you hear anyone talking about moolah, they're talking about money. All right, let's have a look at what my patrons are saying here. Um, I was hungry, but I had the munchies. Yes, that's right. So you say, I, I am hungry, or I was hungry. And you have, you have the munchies. Or in the past, I had the munchies. Andrea, sorry I can't stay. Um, I'll watch the video later. No worries. Thank you, Andreas, for letting me know. Um, I wonder whether I've used or written later on correctly. I've been working and need to go, to go home now. Hmm. Later on. Yes, later on is the correct. That's correct. You've used that correctly. Oh, wow. Now it's absolutely chucking it down. It's raining cats and dogs, ladies and gentlemen. September in the UK. Windy, dark, raining. Lovely. <laughs> okay. So next we have the word moony. If you pull a moony, it means you flash your bottom. 
So sometimes when people are feeling a bit fruity, a bit naughty, they might pull a moony. Or do a moony. You can say someone did a moony. Um, so he pulled a moony, moony from the back of the bus. He pulled a moony from the back of the bus. He, he flashed his bottom at the drivers behind. Terrible behavior. <laughs> Okay, the next one is to mope. If you mope, it's the same as sulking. So I'm, I'm going to mope if, um, if you guys stop watching my videos. I will mope. I will sulk. I'll be sad. I'll sit in my bedroom and pull my sad face. I'll mope. So you could say stop moping around. If someone's moping around, it means they're just hanging around the house, feeling sorry for themselves, going, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. So to mope around, or you could just say, she's moping. He is moping. Stop moping. Stop being sad and feeling sorry for yourself. Um, yes, lovely. Okay, so let me give an example sentence on this one, shall I? Um, so I could say, after, after... She was dumped. To be dumped is to be rejected by your boyfriend or girlfriend. After she was dumped, um, she moped around the house for three whole weeks. You could just say three weeks, but I'm emphasizing that it was a full three weeks that she was moping. After she was dumped, she moped around the house for three whole weeks. Ah, lovely. So Marcelo says, um, in Argentina, it's Teacher's Day. So happy Teacher Day, Anna. Thank you very much. And happy Teacher Day to any other teachers out there. Um, okay. So what do we have? The next one is the word mop. We don't use this very often, but sometimes someone might say, I'm going to get my mop trimmed or you need to sort your mop out. And a mop is a is a cleaning instrument to clean the floor, to wash the floor. It's a mop. You mop. But when you're talking about sorting your mop out, you mean your hair. I guess because hair can look like a mop. It just hangs down like a mop, like a mop does. Um, so if you're going to get your mop sorted out, it means you're probably going to the hairdressers for a haircut. Um, now I've just completely messed up my hair. Uh, so you could say... I need to go to the hairdressers, hairdressers to sort my mop out. And that should be one word. There we go. I need to go to the hairdressers to sort my mop out. And um, DJ Avel is saying a hangover is a time of moping. Yes, you can mope when you have a hangover. If you're feeling bad, you feel sorry for yourself and you mope around the house with a hangover. Okay, here we go. So the next one, um, after you've sorted out your mop, is to muck up. So when you get your mop sorted out, you want to hope that the hairdresser does not muck up. Um, if the hairdresser mucks up, then you'll have a bad hairdo. So let's hope the hairdresser, hairdresser huh, doesn't muck up my hair muck up my hair. Okay. Let's hope the hairdresser doesn't muck up my hair. Have you mucked up anything recently? Hmm. Remember, there's another phrase that we just learnt that's similar to this, that means the same thing. And that was to mess up. Can you remember that one? Uh, where is it? I didn't do this one in alphabetical order, unfortunately, because I rushed it. Uh, mess up, there we go. So to mess up and to muck up are exactly the same, basically. Mess up and muck up. Okay, so the next one is the word mug. And before I complete that, I'm going to say a huge thank you. Not only as Leandro being very, very generous today by dropping a super chat, Edmund has also jumped in and dropped a super chat. And you've said, will mug be in this lesson? I made a mug of myself. Yes, we do have mug. And also I have my mug of tea. And this is a new mug. 
And thank you very much, Edmund, for your super chat. All super chats now are being um, added up and um, saved up to buy better broadcasting software. So hopefully, in the future, I can broadcast here and on Facebook in full in full mode, as well as get more support so my stuff doesn't freeze like it does sometimes. Um, but thank you very much for your super chat. Remember, you guys are entitled to the notes. So if you would like a copy of these notes or any notes that I've previously um, published, then please do let me know. Just drop me an email and I will send them to you as a thank you for your super chat. So the word mug is an interesting word because it can cover a couple of things. Mug can be like I've just shown you, a cup. Mug can also be your face. So you might say, oh, what an ugly mug. She's got an ugly mug, so an ugly face. But if you mug somebody, you it means you rob them. So if I run up to someone in the street and I steal their phone out of their hand and I run away, I have just mugged them. I've just mugged them. So to rob is to mug um, a person, not a place. So you, you mug a person. And then you could call someone a mug. You are a mug. And this means that they're an idiot. They're someone who is naive and easily manipulated. So if someone has tricked me, maybe someone sends me an email and says, um, I need your help. Please send me 5,000 pounds because my mom's in hospital and I'll pay you back in five days. And I'm going, okay then. And I send 5,000 pounds. My friends and my family would call me a mug because I'd been tricked and conned. I was stupid, I was an idiot, and um, easily, I was gullible. That's probably a good word, I was gullible. So there you go, mug can be face, ugly mug. You can be robbed, be mugged. You can have a mug and drink from a mug, or you could be a mug. Um, so you could say the mug, the idiot, with an ugly mug. The mug with an ugly mug, so the the idiot with an ugly face was holding a mug which had previously been um, which had previously been lost when he was mugged. So when he was robbed. So the mug, the person, the stupid person with an ugly face was holding a cup which had previously been lost when he was when he was robbed. But obviously the police managed to recover the mug. So mug is a very interesting word, isn't it? Okay, um, patrons, what are you saying here? Um, Eureka has said, Anna, would you be interested in doing a video from the city, maybe South Bank in the future? I would love to do on location videos. The only problem with doing on location videos is one, the sound and the light. I can't control the environment and two, the internet. So it means relying on a good stream from my um, mobile. I'll have to do it from my mobile phone. And so doing a live lesson from somewhere like that is problematic. But maybe in the future, as this channel grows, and it is growing, as it gets bigger, maybe I will be invited to go and do a broadcast in an office somewhere in London. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I'll hold it in mind. And um, the mug magician mugged the phone. Good one, Swarovic. Nice sentence. Okay, so hopefully that hasn't confused you too much. Um, oh, sorry, slurping my tea there. I do apologise. Okay, so the next one is the is the word mugshot. We're nearly finished, two more. Mugshot. A mugshot, of course, if mug is your face, a mugshot is a photo of your face. More often this is talked about, um, you talk about a mugshot when you've been arrested, when the police take a photograph of, of you after you've been arrested. We often call this a mugshot. They took his mugshot. Um, but sometimes... People say mugshot just for fun. So um, that's a nice mugshot if they're talking about your profile photo, for example. Wow, nice mugshot. Maybe you look like you're scared of just been arrested like in your, in your photo and that's why they called it a mugshot. But mugshot is nothing to do with a cup being um, shot at with a gun. It's a photo. 
And the very last one on the list is the word mutt. Mutt. And a mutt is a dog. It's not a very nice word for a dog. So you could say, get that mutt out of my house. Yeah, so I wouldn't refer to, um, I wouldn't refer to a dog as a mutt. It's not very nice. Um, it's not a swear word or anything. It just means that the dog is kind of probably a stray. Um, it just makes the dog seem like it's not a very nice dog. It's a mutt. It's unwanted, unloved. Poor doggy. Okay, so now is your chance to ask me some questions. So feel free to add your questions into the comments box now and I will try and answer um, maybe, let's say, five questions. So get doing that now. If you are new here, please do make sure you have subscribed and press the bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. I've got lots of really good lessons coming up, things that I know you'll be excited about. And things are changing fast here on English Like a Native. So I don't want you to miss out on anything all these videos are for you and so I want you to be a part of everything I do and that's only with you being involved am I going to be able to make these videos better and better suited for you and your needs. So stay with me, subscribe, bell notification button and help me by giving this um, a thumb up, a like. Gosh, I'm tired today. Let's go back over um, the words that we've covered today just in case you've forgotten or you've joined late. We have to make out, kiss, kiss, kiss. To make tracks, to leave. To make waves, cause trouble and be noticed. A mashup of music, so to stick, to stick a number of tracks together. Max, reaching the, or the maximum, what is the maximum? To max out, phrasal verb, to max something out is to reach the limit of something. Have you lost your marbles? Have you gone crazy? Measly, a very small amount, unsatisfactory amount. Mega, completely the opposite, very big, a lot, mega. A meltdown, usually we're talking about um, a company or an emotional meltdown. It means the collapse of. Merry, to be happy or to be, and more commonly, slightly drunk, happy drunk mess up to make a mistake or muck up mess up or muck up to be miffed to be upset or offended to have the munchies do you have the munchies i certainly do to have the munchies to be hungry to be a minger not a very nice word some a way to describe an unattractive person they are a minger to be mingin is um, an adjective meaning disgusting. It's mingin, yuck. Meat and two veg, <laughs> a man's private parts. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be back in a mo, moment, moment, a mo. And have you lost your mojo at any point in your life? Your mojo is your eagerness, your spirit, your zest for life, your passion. Have you lost your mojo? Do you need more moolah? which is money. Have you recently pulled a moony? To pull a moony is to flash your bottom, naughty, naughty. If you're feeling sad, then you might sulk or rather mope, mope. And remember, if you're sad around the house, you are moping about, moping about. Perhaps you'll feel better once you get your mop sorted out, your hair at the at the hairdressers get your mop sorted out at the hairdressers and hope that the hairdresser doesn't muck up and that should put a smile on your mug on your face mug to be robbed mug meaning cup or mug meaning idiot then if you get your photograph um of your face perhaps after being arrested we call this a mug shot and a not very caring word for a dog is a mutt, a mutt. Brilliant. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Sorry if I'm lacking a little bit in energy. Like I say, I just did a live broadcast on the other channel. It was all singing, so it was very energetic and that has kind of zapped me a little bit of my energy. I'm feeling rather tired. Um, and so what is an offensive word for a fake British accent? 
I don't, I can't remember what people call Brits um, if you're not British. You have a name for Brits, but I I can't remember what those are. Um, I don't know any offensive words for a fake British accent. Anna, please pronounce the word so to sew with a needle and thread. You sew or you sue, which is where you try to get money out of someone if they have used your material, perhaps without permission, or if they have um, neglected safety aspects and you've hurt yourself you sue them you sue them so you try to get money off them in compensation um what else do we have what do in the limelight and in the black mean if something's in the limelight light it means that it's um it's in the foreground people are aware of it so right now in the news hurricane irma has been in the limelight. So the last few days, Hurricane Irma was in the limelight. Um, I haven't really heard the phrase in the black, but in the limelight means in people's view, people are paying attention to you. In my English is so disgusting now. How can I improve it? I need an idea. Well, you're definitely in the right place. Um, you just need to surround yourself with English. You need to read English, you need to listen to English, sing English songs, watch English um, films, programs, attend English lessons and if you can try to get an English speaking partner, maybe someone who's learning as well and just practice as much as you can. That's definitely a good start for you. Um, ba -ba -ba. Could you please upload a video about how to approach an English class? Hmm. Yes, okay. Yes, I will add that to the list. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Please answer what is the difference between in the nick of time and on time. If something happens in the nick of time, it means it's right by the deadline. So imagine, imagine you're on a time, a timed race and you have to reach the end of the race in one minute and you've crossed the finish line at 59 seconds. You made it in the nick of time. So just at the moment you're about to go out of time, you made it. You made it in the nick of time. To make it on time, it's there's less um it's less cutthroat, it's less there's less riding on it. You're just you're just on time. So it doesn't matter if you're it, it, you're not being timed, for example. Um if I want to get a train. And I have to get on this one, there's one train a day, so I have to get on this train. Um, I could arrive half an hour before the train leaves. I'm on time. I could arrive 15 minutes before the train leaves. I'm on time. It's fine. I've got lots of time. If I arrive one minute before it leaves, I arrive just in the nick of time. I hope that makes sense. Uh, okay. Hi, Anna. Is it possible to have the notes you write down during the lessons? Um, thank you, Maria, for asking. So the notes I make for all the live lessons, I reserve as um, a thank you to anyone dropping a contribution to the channel to help the channel to grow. So anyone who drops a super chat has um, free access to any notes that they would like. In the future, um, I will also be putting the notes up on my website, britishenglishpro.com. So um, that's going to be a few weeks before they're all up there, but in future you'll be able to get them there. Also patrons, so patrons who contribute $10 or more a month, um, even if they just are patrons for one month, get access to all my notes. So I, I'm, it's building now. I think there must be at least 50, maybe 40 or 50 notes from previous lessons. And as long as they are patrons, they will get access to all future notes as well as well as other things, other bonuses. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, we certainly need your support. Um, the link is in the description box below. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to have to go because I have to teach a lesson in 15 minutes and at some point I have to cook dinner. Such a busy day. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to those who have dropped Super Chats. I will be live again tomorrow. Look out on Facebook and Instagram for an indication as to what time those lessons will be. Um, I will announce it in the morning once I know my schedule for the day. Otherwise, take care. Have a lovely day. Oh, 
And one more super chat has just come in from Apollyon766. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. As I've just explained, you are entitled to these notes or notes from any previous lesson that you would like. Just drop me an email and I will send them to you. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Goodbye. Lots of love from London.